Yeah, thanks, Matt. All right, so I'm titling this uh, The Role of a Market Maker in Delta Hedging. And quite frankly, it's a little bit unfair for me to try to do this in 10 minutes uh, because we could talk about this for hours and hours and hours. Um, it, it, it gets into market mechanics and understanding some of the key players and what moves prices. Uh, and it is on full display when you uh, have a discussion about very, very short-term options trading um, this also harkens back to the GameStop days when you were seeing big squeezes. This was part of the dynamics that, that go into that. So the first thing you have to understand is, is the role of a market maker and the function um, you know, that they have. They essentially have two, two jobs, right? So one is they match up buyers and sellers. Remember, in the stock market, as well as the options market, there's not one price for something. There's two prices. There's a bid price and an ask price. Let's say it's an asset where the bid is a dollar and the ask is a dollar five. You buy at a buck five, you sell at a buck. You buy at a buck five, you sell at a buck. There's a five cent spread between the bid and the ask. Who gets the five cents? Who gets the spread? The spread is captured by the market maker. The person sitting in the middle of the transaction is capturing that five cents. That's the cheddar for them. That's the profit. Um, so as spreads have compressed, where the bid and the ask have gotten closer and closer and closer together, that's been great for you and I as consumers because there's not as much what we call slippage. Uh, it's easier to get in and out and and, and not have that much, much of a loss. Uh, but it's also kind of shrunk the, the payday, just as a side note, uh, for, for market makers. In an ideal world, right? In an ideal world, as the market maker, I would just sit in the middle of every transaction There'd be a billion buyers and a billion sellers, and I would just sit there and capture the spread every time. And, and, and it would be very easy to match up buyers and sellers because there's always an equal amount. The problem is occasionally there's not. And the second part of my job is I got to provide liquidity. If, if there's a bunch of sellers and there's no buyers, I have to step in and buy. If there's a bunch of buyers and not enough sellers, I have to step in and sell. And so as you provide liquidity, you're, you're taking the other side of a transaction. And that creates some problems because remember, I don't, I don't want really to have any inventory. I don't want to buy calls or buy puts or go bullish or bearish on a stock as the market maker. I just want to collect my five cents, man. I just want buyers and sellers to match up and I'm not taking any risk. I'm just sitting in the middle capturing the spread. But unfortunately, by virtue of what I'm doing, I have to start buying things. I have to start selling things. And that means I start to take on risk, risk, which I don't want to have, which to get rid of, I have to hedge. Yeah, I have to enter offsetting positions. So for instance, for instance, if you have a bunch of call buyers, a bunch of individuals or institutions that are buying call options, and I can't find enough sellers, I, as the market maker, have to step up and sell calls. Okay. And if you go back to option basics, buying calls is bullish. Okay, selling calls is bearish. A bunch of people are buying calls. I got to sell those calls to them, which makes me bearish. Okay, now I'm betting the market's going to go down. I don't want to bet the market's going to go down. I don't have an edge there. I don't know. Maybe it's not going to go down. And so when the market maker sells calls to provide liquidity, they hedge it by entering a bull trade. And the bull trade they typically do is they buy stock. And they buy stock, okay? So you could say that the public or retail, if you want to call it, they buy calls. The market maker sells the calls and then buys stock to hedge, okay? So what is the net effect? Well, the net effect is it's it's it, it puts upward pressure on the stock, okay? The more calls that are purchased, the more calls that have to be sold, the greater the inventory the market maker is bringing on, and the more stock they then have to go buy to hedge. And just imagine that like, like for, as a virtuous cycle where more calls are bought, okay, so more stock is purchased. More calls are bought, more stock is purchased. And you could see how that might exacerbate a rise in the stock. So you take a situation where you have zero day to expiration options that expire at the end of the day today, they're buying the crap out of those, okay? And then the market maker has to be selling a ton of calls, bringing on a, a lot of bearish exposure, and they needing to go buy the stock to offset it, okay? The same thing happens with puts. 
So let's say again, the public runs out and they buy puts. The market maker will do their, their best to find sellers for those puts. But if they don't find enough, they got to sell them themselves. They got to provide liquidity. So they'll sell puts. Well, if you go back to option basics, when you buy a put, it's bearish. When you sell a put, it's bullish. Okay. As the market maker selling puts, I'm now, I'm now accumulating bullish exposure. Do I want to have bullish exposure? No, I don't. I just want to collect the spread. I don't want to have any exposure to the market. I just want to be the middleman. But again, of necessity, I've got to start accumulating this bullish inventory. Well, to hedge it so that I don't have exposure, I'm going to sell stock. I'm going to sell short stock to hedge. I accumulated a bullish position selling puts. I need to offset that by entering a bearish trade, which is shorting stock. What you can imagine, if people are buying puts, buying puts, buying puts, and market makers are selling them, selling them, selling them, um, they're going to have to start shorting stock to hedge that position. That's going to put downward pressure, downward pressure on the stock. So in the in the uh, podcast this week, the Trading Justice podcast, where we learned about zero data expiration options, one of the things that Mark uh, and Matt talked about is that that the it, it can exacerbate a move. It can cause a rally to be even more magnificent. It can cause a sell off to be even more even more aggressive because of what's going on behind the scenes, right? Because of the the domino effect if you have a ton of call options being purchased and a ton of put options being purchased. Um, and that can be something that causes bigger moves, you know, on these, on these days where there's a lot of, a lot of activity. Okay. Now there's other things we could talk about, but that, that really is the essence of what's going on here and why, if you understand this, you start to see that there's a rhyme and a reason maybe as to why moves are being, are, are being uh, exacerbated, as I said, and if you go back, last point here, if you go back to like the GameStop saga and you go back to some of the meme stocks where you were seeing ridiculous moves, a lot of that originated in the options market where you were seeing extreme, extreme amounts of calls purchased, which in turn are having uh, these market makers having to buy a ton of stock to, to hedge themselves. And, and you could see where things kind of get out of hand in the short run. Uh, so there you go. The role of market making, uh, delta hedging, what, what that's about, um, that should give you enough to, to kind of understand what's, what's going on.